This video is called Four Rules for Playing More Confidently and Efficiently. What we all want to do is be able to be a part of the music, to contribute to it, to play a piece of the puzzle, and to create meaningful art, to express ourselves through our music. Sometimes we have a hard time getting rolling and getting on and playing on that rhythm train, feeling and moving confidently. Simply, experience is the greatest help. However, as you're gaining experience on your instrument, here are some things to build that confidence. Particularly, this is going to go for the guitar or any fretted instrument, but it can apply to any stringed instrument and even more broadly to other instruments, except maybe this first one. So let's get started. First one is don't ever look at your right hand or your picking hand, whichever hand is picking or strumming. And yes, that's literally an important rule. You don't need to look at your right hand or your pick hand. The action is happening with your left hand or your fretting hand. The left hand has to think about not only all six strings, but all the frets and all the movements. It has to think about all of that. The right hand only has to think about these six strings and where they are. The action is happening with your left hand or the fretting hand. Focus your attention there. That is, if you need to focus your attention somewhere. Oftentimes, beginners want to focus a lot on their picking hand the action is happening with the left hand. Let your right hand learn where the six strings are. Most of the time, your ears will tell you if you miss the string. For example, if I go, if I'm playing a D chord and I hit these top strings instead of this third one down, my ears will tell me I hit the wrong string. I don't need to look to know I hit the wrong string. My ears told me that that didn't sound good. I need to adjust. I don't need to look to be aware of that. I understand in the beginning you feel like I need to look because this is some intricate thing I'm doing. I get it. That's true. But as soon as possible and as soon as you can get in the habit of looking away from this picking hand. Don't ever look at it. Never ever. So this is just a general rule that you need to be aware of and try to avoid looking at your right hand as much as possible and focus on your left hand if you need to look at a hand. So now you can focus on the action, where the action's happening, and that's with your left hand. Don't go back and forth between your right hand and your left hand and your paper. I call it the triangle of death. We wanna look here and do this, then look here at our hand, then look at what's my next chord, and look at this hand, and then look at this hand where my chord, and look at the paper. No, gotta stop it. You gotta stop the triangle of death. Whenever possible, look away from all of these three things, and focus in on the music. How are we gonna get there? Let's look at number two. Number two is don't focus on your mistakes. Too often beginners spend a lot of time talking about and processing through their mistakes. They, they wanna bring attention to the mistake. They're moving along and they miss a chord or they hit the wrong string. They wanna stop and spend time on it. Well, what you have to do is not focus on the mistake. In fact, don't bring any attention to it at all, not even conscious attention. To literally always be focused on moving forward in the song rather than giving into frustration with yourself. Don't let the rhythm train get away from you. The longer you spend focusing on the mistake, the further that rhythm train gets away from you. Get back on the train as soon as you possibly can with all your focus and attention focused on getting back on track and not on the mistake. The song goes on. It's way more important to get back on the train than it is to stop and focus on the mistake. This leads us to number three. Look ahead. Learn to see past the immediate task. For example, what's my next chord? This chord. What's my next chord? This chord. What's And this, that goes on and on. No, no. Try to look ahead. Memorize the chord progression. When you're starting out, your attention is focused on every little detail as you move. But your attention is on the immediate task. Of course it is, you're, you're gaining experience. And when you're just starting with experience, you're, all of your attention goes to the immediate task. I get it. When your mind only holds what you're into at the moment, moment to moment, so we want to hold more than that in our immediate mind. We want to learn to hold whole sections, like a verse or a chorus, or even the whole song in our mind. 
Of course, this will only come with experience and time, lots of time. So how do we get to where we can hold more than the immediate task in mind? When people are playing scales at first, right? They see one note at a time, moving one note at a time. Their eyes only seeing that one note. Of course, this is part of it. Ways to look further down the way is one, when possible, memorize the chord progression. You got a G and a C and a D, right? Don't just say, okay, G, and now I'm gonna start. No, look at the line and say, okay, I've got a G for this many beats, a D for this many beats, and a C for this many beats. Then you're free to play at least that line without looking at what's my next task. Study and make mental notes of the patterns. So this brings us to number four. Look for the musical themes. Written into the structure of songs is usually a formula. Look at the broader view of the chords in the song. Many times there's a pattern in the timing and structure of the chords. Sometimes it's a repeating chord progression, like the example of G, C, and D. Probably is gonna repeat. Look for the pattern and memorize it. So study and make mental notes of the patterns or write them down to the side. This will take you your focus and attention of the immediate task, as in the previous rule, and allow you to broaden your focus to the bigger picture. Often in pop music, which includes genres like country, worship, rock, there's a repeated pattern of four chords. Take the bird's eye view of the sections of the song and look for the repeating pattern in the chord structure. Once you recognize the pattern, memorize it. Stop looking at it like, hey, what's my next chord? G, okay, what's my next chord? No, memorize it, and that way you're gonna move more freely and confidently. So practice the skill of memorizing the chord progression. Just like everything else you do, that skill of memorizing the chord progression, you can get better at all the time, and you'll become a much more efficient player. So number five is a practical thing you can do with your songs. I do it all the time, and I do it for my students too, and when I do, it always makes a huge difference. And that is, write out the chord progression to the right of the section that you're on. Like if there's space on the side of the paper, for example, to the right of the section that you're on, write the chords out, beat for beat, usually into two measures per line, and line for line for all four or so of the lines. This part is important. Write out the chords in an organized way. This simplifies things and makes you think through, for example, okay, how many beats am I on this chord before it transitions to this chord? Because a lot of times, you know, you just have words and it's like, there's a chord on top of the words. Well, it doesn't tell you how long to be there. And you need to actually process that. So I write it out just to the side. I'll write like, for example, that you see here. However many beats there are in each line and write them out, dissect how many beats are in each chord. Most individual chords either last two beats, four beats, or eight beats. If you have a three chords in a, on a line, for example, usually one of them is, is double to make what I call a four chord uh, progression. Most progressions are a four chord progression. Even that example that I gave from G to C to D, what are we doing with this D? We're doubling it. So I think of it like, the chords are G, C, D, D. You see what I mean? So look for those patterns as in rule four and write them down really neatly to the side. Fun fact, most lines are eight beats or basically two measures with four lines total, making a total of 32 beats per section. This is almost always the case or something similar. This is a conscious formula that writers do on purpose to make their songs more catchy and accessible to the ear. It's predictable and it's easier to listen to. If sections of songs are too odd or it'll throw the listener off. Songwriters know that there needs to be somewhat of a predictable flow to their songs. So they're formatted in this way. So the rule is eight beats per line or two measures, Four lines total, boom, 32 beats total for say a verse or a chorus. So as you dissect your song, expect that to be the case, but of course be ready for the rules to be broken. 
if you like to sing songs and you're having trouble connecting the rhythm of, of your voice to the rhythm of your instrument, well, start by practicing the chord progression first and get it dialed in beat for beat in total and get the rhythm part right. The rhythm and the chords to the song will stand alone and apart from the melody that has its own rhythm and flow on top of the chords. So organizing yourself can be super, super important. I hope you enjoyed that video. My name is Jacob Paul with Inside Out Online. Study those rules and make a conscious effort to apply them to your playing. I'll see you on that next video.